Right now, we're inside the last stretch of a timeline that almost never happens in human history. Four days, that's it. Four days until December 19th, 2025, the closest approach window everyone has been counting down to. On, uh, it will be closest to Earth, actually, on December 19th, uh, which is just the week before uh, Christmas. Uh, I hope it will not uh, ruin any um, uh, holiday um, events. The moment when 3i Atlas is at its most watchable from our side of the solar system, when the geometry is finally clean enough for the world's instruments to squeeze real answers out of this visitor. And I need you to hear this clearly before we go any further. The biggest risk in the final days of a mystery like this is that we become too certain too early. We lock onto one story. It's a comet. It's not a comet. It's artificial. It's nothing. It's everything. And then we force every new piece of data to serve that story. That's how people get fooled. Not because they're stupid. Because the human brain hates open loops. It wants closure. It wants the ending now. But 3i Atlas is not giving us closure. It's giving us a test. So here's the question you're not supposed to ask out loud. What if we may be wrong about this? Not in the dramatic, clickbait way. Not aliens confirmed. Not NASA hiding everything. I mean something quieter and more dangerous to our ego. What if we're wrong about what kind of object this is? Wrong about what the key anomaly even is? Wrong about what we should be looking at? And wrong about what the big moment on the 19th actually represents? Because the public argument has turned into a binary fight. Natural or artificial? Comet or probe? Normal or impossible? And that's exactly the kind of framing that makes you miss the truth. Because the universe doesn't care about the categories we built. It will happily send something through our neighborhood that doesn't fit our boxes, and then watch us panic while we try to label it. Let's start with the part we do know, because that's where the weirdness begins. 3i Alice is the third confirmed interstellar object we've ever tracked moving through the solar system on a hyperbolic path. Meaning, it's not bound to the sun, like planets, and most comets are. It came from outside. It's leaving. We get one pass, one window. A traveler crossing a room where we happen to be standing, and we're trying to figure out who they are before they're gone forever. The first interstellar visitor, Oumuamua, in 2017, is still a scar in astronomy, because it created a split. On one side, people saying, rare natural object. On the other side, people saying the anomalies were too much. Then, 2i Borisov showed up and looked more like what everyone expected an interstellar comet should look like. It had the familiar behavior. It had the familiar story. It didn't heal the scar, but it covered it for a while. And then, 3i Atlas arrived, and it didn't just reopen the old argument. It expanded it, because this object didn't just show up and behave like a postcard comet. It showed up and started dragging questions behind it like a tail that refuses to fade. Why did it brighten the way it did? Why do some observations suggest unusual structure? Why does the timing of certain changes feel inconveniently placed inside the worst observation windows? Why do you get one look from one team and a different look from another team after processing? Why do amateurs sometimes show features that aren't obvious in official releases? Why do the explanations always sound like they're catching up to the data instead of predicting it? That's the feeling people can't shake. Not proof of anything. A feeling. And feelings don't belong in science, but they do belong in the audience's brain. Which is exactly why this is the perfect environment for confusion, misinformation, and overconfidence. And then you have the countdown itself. Final four days. That line is powerful because it implies a reveal. It implies a verdict. It implies that on December 19th, the universe will finally pick a side. But what if the big moment isn't the moment the truth becomes obvious? What if it's the moment the truth becomes harder to argue against because we finally get the cleanest data set and it forces both camps to change their story? That's how real discoveries happen. Not with a Hollywood signal blasting across the sky, with a slow collapse of bad explanations as better data arrives. Now, let's talk about what people are actually watching. Some are watching brightness changes. And to be fair, brightness is not trivial. When an object's light curve behaves in a way that doesn't match expectations, it tells you something about shape, rotation, activity, dust, and gas production. But brightness can also lie to you. Atmospheric conditions lie. Processing choices lie. Exposure settings lie. Even your brain lies because it wants to see patterns. But brightness still matters because if 3i Atlas shows rapid swings, unusual spikes, or non-repeating behavior, it could be telling us that the object's activity is not stable, or that the coma is doing something dynamic, or that we are not seeing a simple, clean, 
nucleus. Then there's morphology, what it looks like, tail, coma, jets, structure. The problem is, comets are messy. They are physics laboratories wrapped in fog. The nucleus is tiny compared to the coma. You don't see the engine directly. You see the exhaust. So two people can look at the same exhaust and argue about what kind of engine made it. One will say, this is normal outgassing. Another will say, this is directed. And both can sound convincing because the coma is literally a cloud designed to hide the exact thing everyone wants to see. That's not a conspiracy. That's comet physics. And, and then there's the thing that makes people uneasy. Motion, trajectory, course changes, non-gravitational acceleration. Those words are gasoline in a story like this because they sound like maneuver. They sound like control. But here's the uncomfortable truth. Natural comets can absolutely show non-gravitational acceleration. Jets can push. Asymmetric outgassing can shift the path. And the more active the comet, the more complicated that becomes. So when people say, it changed course, the first response from an experienced orbital dynamicist is not probe. It's what's the outgassing model. It's how confident is the astrometry. It's what are the residuals. It's what processing assumptions were made. Because small measurement errors can look like big storylines if you package them the right way. So why is this still gripping people? Because even with those caveats, 3i Atlas keeps producing moments where the clean, dismissive answer doesn't feel satisfying. Like when we get official imagery that looks like a neat point of light, and then independent processing of raw data seems to show a more diffuse, structured core. Or when amateurs show features in their time lapses that they insist are consistent night after night, while the public release from a major agency looks almost too clean. Or when a weird phenomenon is described in a reassuring sentence that sounds like a parent saying, it's just the wind. When the window is shaking hard enough that everyone in the room can feel it. And yes, this is where some people start drifting into the dangerous zone. They're hiding it. They're lying. They're managing perception. Let's slow down. There is a boring explanation for a lot of that. Processing pipelines. Calibration. PR choices. The fact that agencies release images that are meant to communicate a result. Not every messy pixel of raw reality. And the fact that most people do not realize how much of astronomy is interpretation before it becomes a pretty picture. A point spread function model, background subtraction, cosmic ray removal, stacking, deconvolution. These aren't tricks, they're tools. But tools can also shape what a viewer believes they're seeing. If you apply a model designed for a typical point source to something that is not behaving typically, you can compress complexity into something that looks normal. Again, that's not necessarily malicious, but it can be misleading if the object is unusual enough that the clean result hides the interesting part. This is why independent verification matters. Not because you should distrust everything official by default, but because science is supposed to be reproducible. If raw files exist publicly, multiple people should be able to process them and land in roughly the same neighborhood. Differences should be explainable. The moment differences become consistent and hard to reconcile, you don't jump to cover-up. You zoom in on the methodology, exposure times, saturation, filters, SF assumptions, and you ask the most uncomfortable question in modern science communication. Are we optimizing for truth or for narrative clarity? Now let's get back to the countdown. Four days. Why does that matter? Because the closer 3i Atlas gets to its best observing geometry, the less we have to rely on interpretation and the more we can rely on direct constraints. Better angles, better signal to noise, better time coverage, more cross-checking between independent observers. When you have an object that has sparked this much debate, the final approach window is like a courtroom where the evidence finally gets projected on a bigger screen. Not perfect, not absolute, but better. And that brings us to the core of what your competitor title is doing. We may be wrong about this. That's a powerful hook because it plays on uncertainty. But the best version of that line is not fear. It's humility. It's the recognition that interstellar objects are rare. And every time one arrives, it exposes the weaknesses of our assumptions. Aumamua exposed weaknesses in how we interpret non-gravitational acceleration and shape from limited data. Borisov showed that not all interstellar visitors will be weird. And 3i Atlas is now challenging how we interpret morphology and chemistry under observation constraints. So here's the Astro Dynasty way to frame this. We are not watching a single object. We are watching a collision between three things. A strange visitor, 
our instruments, and our institutions. The visitor brings physics we may not have modeled properly. The instruments bring limitations we forget about. The institutions bring delays, formatting, messaging, and a pace that doesn't match the internet. And when those three collide, the public mind fills in the gaps with stories. That's the real anomaly in 2025. Not that an object is strange. That we can't tolerate the gap between we captured data and here's the full context. Now let's talk about what could happen on the 19th and let's keep it grounded. The most likely outcome is not a signal. The most likely outcome is not a dramatic visual reveal. The most likely outcome is that we get better constraints that either reduce the anomaly list or sharpen it. That might sound boring, but it's actually the difference between science and myth. Because if the object is natural, better data should usually make explanations simpler over time. Not instantly, but gradually. If the object continues to behave in ways that force explanations to become more complex, more ad hoc, more patched, that's when the discomfort grows. Not because it proves anything artificial, but because it means our models are missing something real. And if you want to keep the viewer locked in, this is where you make it personal without making it paranoid. You say, imagine you're a scientist and you're trying to model a visitor that has never been seen before. You're not just measuring an object, you're measuring the limits of your own knowledge. Every time you update the orbit solution, every time you refine a chemistry ratio, every time you apply a processing technique, you are not just revealing the object, you are revealing yourself, your biases, your assumptions, your default tools, and the public is watching that process in real time, which almost never happens. Usually the mess stays inside the lab, and the polished paper comes out later. This time, the mess is on social media, while the object is still in the sky. That's why the last four days feel intense. Because this isn't just astronomy, it's epistemology. It's how we decide what we know, who we trust, and how quickly we demand certainty. The worst thing we can do is to treat December 19th as a binary switch, alien or comet. The best thing we can do is treat it like a data convergence event, a moment where multiple independent streams of observation cross and the object has fewer places to hide behind geometry and noise. And yes, there is a version of this story that is deeply uncomfortable, not because it involves extraterrestrials, but because it involves us. What if the most shocking thing about 3i Atlas is that it exposes how fragile public trust is? How quickly people go from curiosity to certainty to accusation? How fast misinformation spreads when official communication is slow? How easily a processed image becomes a battlefield. What if the big moment is not the object doing something dramatic, but the public realizing they don't actually know how to interpret what they're seeing, and the institutions realizing they can't control the narrative like they used to? Because here's the paradox. If something truly extraordinary did happen, the first reaction wouldn't be celebration. It would be confusion, delay, verification, and careful language. That would look exactly like silence to the internet. And if nothing extraordinary happens, the same silence would still happen because that's the default pace of scientific processing. So the audience is trapped in a pattern. Delay looks suspicious whether the object is ordinary or not. That's why the narrative is so volatile. So what do we do with that? We do what smart observers always do. We anchor ourselves to what can be tested, not what feels true, not what is most exciting, what can be tested. Over the next four days, watch for independent cross-confirmation. Watch whether multiple observers in different locations, using different instruments, report the same structural features. Watch whether orbit updates converge or keep drifting. Watch whether the chemistry story simplifies or becomes more patched. Watch whether new images reveal consistent geometry changes that match dust physics, or whether they keep producing shapes that are hard to reconcile cross angles. If you see convergence, that's the universe giving you clarity. If you see divergence, that's the universe telling you the story is not closed. And let me say this carefully because it matters. Speculation can be fun. It can also be destructive if it becomes certainty without evidence. Artificial is the biggest claim you can make in astronomy. It's not something you earn with vibes. It's something you earn with data that refuses every natural, a natural explanation. Even after extreme scrutiny, we are not there. And if we ever got there, it would not be proven in a week on social media. It would be proven in a brutal, slow, global verification process. That's the truth. So if you want to be ahead of the crowd, don't become the person yelling the biggest claim. Become the person watching the strongest evidence. Now, with that said, here's the reason you should still care. If 3i Atlas is natural, it still matters enormously. 
It would mean the chemistry of other star systems can be wildly different from ours. It would mean volatile ratios can look unfamiliar. It would mean comet morphology can persist in ways we haven't modeled. It would mean our catalogs are not ready. It would mean more interstellar visitors are likely passing unnoticed. And we've only caught the ones that happen to cross the right surveys at the right time. And if 3i Atlas is natural, but weird, it may be the kind of object that forces the next generation of detection and modeling to evolve. That's a real discovery. That's the kind of discovery history remembers. But if the object continues to behave in a way that stays resistant to clean modeling, then even without invoking anything artificial, it becomes one of the most important stress tests in modern astronomy. Because it reveals where our models are strong and where they are fragile, it tells us how easily our explanations can become storytelling. It tells us where we need better instruments, better cadence, better openness with raw data. It tells us whether the scientific ecosystem can handle a global audience watching every step. So as we enter the final four days, I want you to imagine the object out there doing what it's doing, completely indifferent to us. It doesn't know we're debating. It doesn't care about our categories. It will pass and it will leave. The question is not whether it will do something dramatic on cue for our cameras. The question is whether we will do the one thing a mature civilization should do. Observe carefully, verify relentlessly, and resist the hunger for immediate certainty. December 19th is not a finish line. It's a checkpoint, a moment where we either reduce the mystery or deepen it with better data. So here's what I want to know, and I want you to answer it honestly. If the data comes in and it looks more normal than you expected, will you accept that? Or will you move the goalposts because you're already emotionally invested in the mystery staying alive? And if the data comes in and it looks stranger than the official narrative can comfortably explain, will you demand transparency and methodology? Or will you jump straight to the biggest conclusion because it feels satisfying? because that's the real test of the final four days, not the object, us. If you're watching this as the countdown hits its final stretch, do one thing for me. Keep your mind open in both directions, not open to anything, open to evidence. That's how you survive an era where reality and narrative are constantly fighting for your attention. Four days left. The sky is about to give us a better look. Let's see if we're wrong. And if we are, let's be wrong in the most intelligent way possible, with the courage to update our beliefs when the universe hands us new data.